Hey there folks, Nixcraft here. Welcome to a new video on the channel uh, where we will be exploring new Minecraft beta. Uh, we are in beta 1.18.20.21. It is uh, the newest beta that just dropped today. So uh, we will be exploring some of the new stuff. I will put a full change log linked in the description. But uh, let's hop right in to the create new world screen where there's actually a new user interface. Um, I already loaded it up and I think it looks fantastic. So we have everything we could need here, all looking brand new and updated, all the tabs, including a beta features tab all the way down here. And uh, it's got some wild update features and everything like that. So I think this is a great start and great introduction. Now we're gonna name our world beta test one and I'm um, actually probably gonna switch it over to creative, I think. And uh, before we hop in, we are gonna go back to the beta features and actually enable the wild update. Uh, it's gonna give you a little notification here. You might experience some crashes and stuff, but uh, we're gonna activate it anyway. We should be okay. Let's create our new world, guys, and hop right into some new stuff. What a beautiful spawn we have here, guys, uh, staring right at a tree. So first thing we're gonna do is just kinda find an open spot to uh, settle in. We're gonna wanna look at these skulk blocks. Uh, there are all different types of skulk blocks here added in the wild update. I want to test out what they do so let's grab up these and find a spot to test them out. This seems like a good spot to settle down by this nice mountain over here but uh, we will start off with just the regular blocks. We have the skulk vein and skulk block here. Now these are kind of just decorative blocks it seems like. They don't have too much use yet um, but the way they're formed is pretty interesting. Um, and it has something to do with the rest of the blocks in my inventory here. And I think we'll start by placing down ourselves a skulk sensor. Uh, I'll put it right here and let's uh, test some stuff out with it. Skulks will sense movement around them and uh, we'll pick it up with their little whiskers or hairs or whatever on the top. So if I were to move closer to this, um, it will pick up my footsteps as I'm walking towards it. Same if I'm walking back, and same for that chicken that's walking around it, as you can see there. Um, but if you are sneaking, or if you crouch around the skulk sensor, let me move this guy, um, it won't pick up your footsteps. So if you crouch around it, nothing will happen, as you can see here. So this is a pretty cool block. Skulk sensors will also emit a redstone signal whenever they pick up a sound. Uh, so I ran a line off it here, and if we walk towards it, it should emit just a tiny redstone signal for a bit of time and uh, this should make for some very interesting redstone farms. And with our next block, uh, we are going to use the Skulk Shrieker. I'm probably going to get rid of this sensor first so it's not making noise the whole time. Um, but this block is supposed to shriek when you walk over it and uh, give you a darkness effect. But uh, I've been testing it and it hasn't really worked. Um, it worked one time when I walked over it. I was still in creative. I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but yeah, right now it's not really uh, making any noise, no darkness effect or anything, so that's a little strange. Oh, I looked it up, and it turns out you could power these with a redstone signal. So let's see if I could uh, place a lever down here and make this thing work. Hopefully it does. And, uh, nope. Looking like they don't shriek. Shriekers don't shriek. <laughs> Moving on to our next block here, we have the Skulk Catalyst. Now this is a very interesting block. So if you take out a mob, could be a pig, cow, or maybe a zombie, which I have a spawn egg in my inventory here, uh, it will absorb the experience and then spread the Skulk block around it. So here's a zombie now, and uh, we could take him out. He's gonna burn in the sun too, but since we hit him, he will still drop XP. And as you can see, skulk block and veins are all around the block. This feature is pretty interesting. I'm not too sure how uh, people would make some farms with this, but still, it is a renewable way to get these different skulk blocks. And uh, you could definitely use these for building. They look really, really nice. That is uh, probably enough fun with the skulk blocks for now. Uh, maybe we'll just do one more test of this shrieker. I want to see if it makes a noise. Eh, I guess not. So uh, we are going to move on with the rest of the video, actually what was in this beta, and we are going to talk about frogs. So maybe we'll fly over to a separate part of this island and uh, start diving into some of their mechanics. 
Now that we're away from our uh, Skulk Island over there, we could uh, make some settlement by the water here and spawn in some frogs. Now these adorable little guys come in a few different color variants uh, depending on the biome they spawn, spawn in. Uh, these orange warm colored ones will be uh, more in the warm biomes because we're in the plains here. And as you can see, they could jump very, very high. They've got an adorable way of walking around too. Look at this little guy. <laughs> these guys are very, very cute. And uh, to breed these guys up, we're actually going to need some seagrass, much like turtles. They actually don't breed babies right away. They need to go plant some eggs. So uh, I'm going to probably hop in the creative inventory here and get some seagrass and uh, show you guys a little example of how that works. Um, I looked it up on the Minecraft wiki and if we feed these guys, they will find the nearest block of water and um, hopefully make some eggs. And now they are called frog spawn, I believe, and they're like little eggs that sit on top of the water. I have them in my inventory down below. And um, basically, there's the other guy. Uh, they will head over to the water just like sea turtles do. And uh, we should get a baby frog after I feed these two. Looks like our little buddy's heading to the water now. And he should lay frog spawn on top of the water, sitting up there kind of like a lily pad. And those are actually tadpole eggs. So a baby tadpole will come out of there. And I have one of those in my inventory. Let's put them down right next to it. And they will eventually turn into frogs. There he is. So um, you could put these guys into a bucket as well. And honestly, that texture in the inventory here is adorable. Look at those little pixels sticking out. So frogs are really cool. Let's move on to these lights. Now you may be wondering why we have a little magma cream out here. Uh, that is because frog lights can actually come from frogs eating these magma creams. So um, if we spawn this guy right in front of him, he should stick his tongue out and eat him. And we've got a yellow frog light over there. There's yellow, green, and purple. And uh, the yellow is from the swamp frog, so we can confirm that's what he is. Green, snowy, and purple is tropical. Last thing I wanted to touch on is actually here in the home screen. If we uh, scroll down to where the seed number is, there is a new thing in this beta where uh, Bedrock has 64-bit seeds, which means both Java and Bedrock seeds can work together, which is amazing. So we could share worlds across platforms. But that's going to do it for me today, folks. Hope you enjoyed this short look at the new beta. I enjoyed learning some of the new stuff. If you want to see more like this, leave a comment on the video and like it as well. Subscribe if you are new here. Once again, my name is Nixcraft, and uh, let me know what you guys think about some of these new features and what you're excited about most for 1.19. So I will see you in the next one, folks. Take care.